OK, coming next on the sequence, a preview of tonight's Arena documentary on BBC Two. It's a look at the remarkable talent of George Ivan Morrison. And I'm going to be chatting with the director of the programme, Anthony Wall. And, uh, Anthony works for the Arena series after this taste of Van the Man's considerable track record. Van Morrison then with them way back and the original recording of Gloria, a song which has gone on quite rightly to become a classic of rock music. With me then, Anthony Wall, the director of One Irish Rover. This, uh, this evening's Arena tribute, in a sense, or observation of Van Morrison at work. It's on BBC Two at five past eight. Welcome to the programme, Anthony. Hi. What were you actually setting out to do in this programme? Well, um, <clears throat> Van uh, said right from the word go that he wanted to do something different. Um, as he put it, and then he would sort of, kind of look at me and uh, expect me to come up with something, <laughs> which um, we did seem to do from time to time. It, it had sort of, originally we, we had something in mind that would have been loosely marked his 25 years in pop music, um, with a sort of a, we were thinking of having a sort of a big type of gig so in Belfast. And uh, for one reason, it didn't work out that way, which I was really glad of by the end of the year, because by the end of the year, we'd been 25 years of rock and roll on nearly everybody else, because <laughs> it was 25 years of rock and roll for nearly everybody. Yeah. So um, it didn't work out like that. And I think that what we, we, never, what we didn't want to do was a straight um, rockumentary. I mean, I actually, funnily enough, worked with the person who invented that dreadful term once. Um, and um, th that sort of conventional profile with baby pictures and, you know, he was born here and, God forbid, people talking about him and telling you what to think about his songs. So it was, we just said it should be performance-based. And um, that, in a way, that, that it was to do with the selection of a particular set of performers for him to perform with that would amount to a sort of a comprehensive picture of the state of the art of Van Morrison, the, yeah. the performer. You, say, you do say, right. though, that it's, it's not a definitive portrait. That, that's something you wanted to emphasise at one point. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's very much, it's a sort of, it's a musical. It's a, it's a performance programme, basically. <clears throat> and um, I think that, that he's one of the few rock stars that really still has got something to say from that era. And I think, to you know, really, most of them... Aren't, aren't, it doesn't flow through them the way that it used to, you know. Yeah. So, but he seems to have, his muse has never left him, if anything. And so that, by the mere virtue of that, over 25 years, of course, uh, when it doesn't, then an artist is in a position where his work gets reinforced, like it was with Dylan in the 60s, you know, by the time, or the Beatles, by the time they got round to Abbey Road, you just thought, how are they doing it? Mm. So, um, but it was, it, it, the, 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 Performers were who he who he played with was really became the essence of it. So right from the word go, Bob Dylan and John Lee Hooker were number one musts. And um, the they're other, easy to get, aren't they? Uh, they're very easy to get. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly aren't. No, they're not a walk in the park in any respect whatsoever. But um, uh, John Lee Hooker, I must say, is an absolutely charming man. He's a complete delight. And although you know he sounds so kind of m mean and moody on does great records, but. Well, after there was one rather nice thing that happened. We were filming um, on the banks of a Louisiana bayou, and it seemed like appropriate to be filming where this, this music comes from on a Mississippi tributary. And um, they, they they do um, a number together. Hooker sings this almost like a country and western type recitation called "Don't Look Back," which Van's always liked. It's a really beautiful sort of philosophical piece, and she gives Van advice really. While well, Van plays the guitar, and um, my assistant. Um, it's called Janice, um, had to go down the way a bit to ask some people to keep quiet. These are sort of one of the depressing aspects of filming you're forever making unreasonable demands of everybody <laughs> around you. And so she missed it. So she said this when she got back, and he sang it to her by the car, just the two of them, and, you know, because she, she had, yeah, and he just sort of did it specially for her. Now, that is incredible. Now, once again, we've all heard about Van the Man in terms of the myth, the yeah. myth of the awkward, the, the, <laughs> the difficult Van Morrison. This, right. you've just painted a portrait of a man who can be the exact opposite of that. Well, um, yes, he can be, absolutely. I think that um, <clears throat> the, he, he certainly doesn't see himself as difficult. And um, it, he's, he's sort of, um, I think that, I mean, when in social circumstance, you can talk the hind legs of a donkey, you know, and he <laughs> sort of kind of likes, you know, he likes what um, uh, good crack, the crack was good, by which I don't mean the drug made popular on housing estates all over the Western world. It's an Irish term meaning having a good time. And I think that's what he likes. He likes a laugh. And um, although his songs are often very mystical and ethereal, and he does obviously have 
you know, I, I think he's, it's clear that he has, you know, religious beliefs that are um, mystical. He's a very down-to-earth person at the same time, you know, sort of, um, and uh, very straightforward. I mean, I've watched him, you know, go to gigs, he walks in, and goes on stage in the clothes he's wearing. His contract does not require 14 Persian carpets, dancing girls, ping pong <laughs> tables, and sort of, you know, uh, vintage champagne or anything. Does it absolutely with a vengeance, and then walks off and go, goes home. You know, and that's so he's he's not. Um, there's no sort of side to him. Yeah, there's a lovely story of him going to the BBC Television Centre some years ago to uh, to record a special appearance in a programme, and he he ambled up through the main gates and got as far as reception, and was um, turned around by one of the security guards who sent him away. Thought he was a builder or something. The man never did come back. He didn't come back to do the show at well, all. Yeah. They were, yeah, <laughs> Apocryphal yeah. maybe, but yeah. still entertaining. You got uh, you got Van Morrison to talk to you, and here's yes. uh, here's a clip where he discusses some of the roots of the music and his early experience of the blues. The first blues singer I heard that I picked up on, I suppose, was Lead Belly. That was the first one. And, well, he was everything blues folk. He did blues folk country. He sort of did a cross section. That just it sounded natural. That's what it sounded like to me, like the most natural thing I'd ever heard. And then, oh, as part of that, I suppose, was when Donegan came along and he started to do Lead Belly material. And then all of a sudden, through Donegan, Lead Belly and Woody Guthrie became huge. I mean, like most people probably buying the records didn't know that but I mean that's really what happened so and Donegan brought this into the forefront and sort of people from my age group could then legitimately play it in a skiffle group or whatever you know? and this is Lead Belly Lee and Western Plain original crackles on a very original 10-inch LP that we've rescued from the BBC Record Library. We're talking with Anthony Wall about uh, tonight's arena documentary, One Irish Rover, examines the work of Van Morrison, and there was one of the inspirations, Lead Belly. Uh, you, you've um, observed Van Morrison actually performing that song yourself, Anthony. Yes, I mean, he, he, um, he, met, he, he loves Lead Belly, and um, uh, often talks, just in chat, talks about him. Yeah, it was a it was rather curious piece that he, he showed me with... Um, him and Derek Bell, the piano player from the Chieftains, just the two of them together is a rather eccentric rendition of it. Yeah. Now, talking live performance, you, you have <coughs> plenty, as you say, in tonight's mm. programme. Bob Dylan, uh, mm. you, you brought in. Now, here's yeah. a man definitely re renowned for being difficult to work with. <laughs> yes. Well, um, yeah. um, well, he obviously, he, he wanted to be in it because of fan. And um, we found ourselves filming in Athens, this, it was very difficult to do it here because... Athens, Greece or Athens, Athens Georgia? Athens, Greece. <laughs> Athens, Greece, right. And um, because, it, he's, you know, obviously he keeps himself to himself, to say the least. And, uh, I mean, actual fact, he, he books in in hotels under pseudonyms. And um, while we were in Athens, he, his party were booked in under the name of Donald Pump. <laughs> 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 and um, so he, he had some time free... And um, it, it seemed like sort of kind of quite interesting idea to do it there. And we, obviously we would be less hassled and he would feel less hassled. And um, <clears throat> he was staying at the, the Marriott Hotel. There are two big hotels in Athens, which has a, a roof, a bar, a roof and a swimming pool where rather large persons dripping with gold tend to be getting in and out <laughs> of. Anyway, so in order to, he had a very large entourage, there were about 18 of them with whom and I would find myself negotiating with different members of these people. And as if I stayed up there, eventually, you know, you, you kept seeing them. And um, <clears throat> he had a couple of bodyguards. One was American, one was British. And this American guy, he, he used to, he used to uh, address everybody as big guy. So I'd be sitting there, and uh, he'd come up, and he'd say, Hey, big guy, Bob would like to know your concept. <laughs> so I sort of told him what I'd got in mind. Then, you know, sort of like a beer later, an hour or so, come ambling. But he said, Bob likes your concept, big guy. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a relief. <laughs> you know, now we can get on and do something. And um, there was just a very obvious place to do it, which happened to be called the Hill of the Muses. And it's a hill opposite the Acropolis, which is where if you want the best medium-term view of it, you go up there. I thought, well, Rock's two great poets, you know, Hill of the Muses sounds <laughs> ideal, a good concept, you know. Yes. And, um, and the, you have to walk the last half a mile, so this sort of entourage of vehicles, of limousines and vans and whatever, stopped at the, uh, the car park and we all troop up there. And, at the t <laughs> and then Van and, and Dylan sat down and began to sing, 
to the utter amazement of the dozen or so like mainly British tourists <laughs> who just happened to be up there that time in the afternoon. It must be a, a great bit of film. I look forward to seeing it tonight. Well, did it, it make it to the nice. show? It did make it oh, to the show. Oh, indeed, absolutely, yes. Right. They do. Um, uh, Dylan didn't want to sing any of his own songs. He only wanted to sing songs that are Van Morrison songs. And he was doing Crazy Love in his show, actually, at that time. And there were two songs in particular that he, want, he was very keen on doing. One, with, one is One Irish Rover. And uh, the other is a song called Foreign Window, which is rather a Dylan-esque sort of piece. Right. What do you feel is Van Morrison's greatest strength? <clears throat> well, I think, it, I think he's unique um, for, for having so many attributes, actually. And then one of the things you do see him do in the course of run is played very, several different instruments, is that he is a great songwriter and a great performer of his songs and other people's songs, which you might say is true of Dylan or whatever, but not, I don't think, so much the Dylan of today, more the Dylan of yesterday. But he's also an absolutely brilliant band leader. And um, <clears throat> this is something he's not particularly given credit for. And his relationship with Georgie Fame is, is, is one of the, the most interesting things going at the moment, because Georgie Fame is also a very good band leader. And I think that Georgie Fame looks after the fundamentals, it chugs along, and then that gives Van space, which is what he likes more than anything, to this quite this unique imagination that he has mm. to be given free reign. Do you feel at the end of what must be 18 months, two years that you've known mm. the man, do you think you do know Van Morrison now? Well, I mean, I... Did he let you in? Uh, I mean, it's a... Do I mean, I, I, I feel I know him quite well, you know, but I mean... Not like I know my closest friends or anything like that. Well, we've got a chance to uh, find out what we can and maybe everything that you know tonight then on uh, <laughs> BBC Two, Five Past Eight. Anthony, okay. thank you for talking to well, us. Thank you. The documentary is called One Irish Rover, directed by our guest today, Anthony Wall. We both want to hear this next one, so no excuse.